What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Saturday. Today's gonna be a great day, everyone. Let me tell you why. Three o'clock, I got a party bus. Going from three to nine, going to a couple bars, gonna watch the football games. There's about 30 of us going. I am excited. It's gonna feel good to get out of the house. I can't wait. Up bright and early this morning. Gotta take care of some things before I hit the road. But we gotta go over some information. What happened overnight? What's going on in the market? What are the alts doing? Some of these alts are trying to rally. Look at Polkadot overtaking XRP, jumping into the number four spot, almost up 20% in the last 24 hours. XRP is still stumbling and fumbling around that 28, 29 cent region. It is all good. The total market cap keeps growing. We are well over a trillion dollars at this point. The Bitcoin dominance is slowly going down. We went from 68.2, we are down to 67.1. This is what we want to see. This could trigger the alt season. I think we need a dip below 65, maybe 63% Bitcoin dominance so we can fully, fully call that alt season. Yes, XRP is going to go up. I'm about to show you a graph in a second that I think you're going to like. But what has always happened when XRP has dropped out of that number four spot or that number three spot? What has always happened? We have seen an XRP rally to regain its dominant spot. So I am expecting a little bit of a run up here from XRP. I do not expect Polkadot to be sitting at number four for too long. I mean, XRP, it's 28 cents. It's been accumulating. You know the saying, the longer the base, the higher we go to space. And that's what's gonna happen. And that's going to be on this chart. I'm gonna show you a little bit later. So hang in there. First, I want to get over to this interview between Pomp and Kevin O'Leary. Most of you might know Kevin O'Leary, big time investor. He's from Shark Tank. He's talking to Pomp about Bitcoin and digital currencies. And I find it very, very interesting. What Kevin O'Leary is talking about is XRP. And I'm going to prove that to you as soon as we watch this clip. It's a minute 34. Listen to Kevin's words. Look at Bob Pomp's face. I mean, he brings Kevin on. He thinks Kevin's going to be all about Bitcoin. He's going to praise it. He's going to tell him he bought so much. He can't wait, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't happen. He tells him, listen, Bitcoin's, yeah, it was the first to the show. But guess what? Institutions aren't looking at it. It's slow. It's expensive. But if you had something that was out there that could trade instantly where you can jump in and out of currencies or air miles, etc., then you are talking about something, something that investors would like. Have a listen to this, a minute and 34, here we go. My issue around these special asset classes, let's drift back to Bitcoin because it is the granddaddy of all of the debates going on here. There would be tremendous value in a currency, a digital currency, and every time I talk to you about this, it's the same topic. I look at, I look at the asset value of Bitcoin versus the asset value of all things traded and Bitcoin is still a nothing burger, a giant nothing burger. And the reason I would argue that that's the case is you're, you don't have every institution willing to play ball with it. But if there was an attempt to either take Bitcoin itself or some other currency, because I think Bitcoin's proven the first mile, there's no question about it. There's global interest in digital currency, but a, a, a digital currency that could be traded everywhere with the regulator agreeing to it and would be agnostic, in other words, you could trade it to buy assets in Switzerland, trade it to buy assets in France or in England or in the United States, and everybody would take that digital currency. Then you would have something, Pomp. Then you would have something of tremendous value because that way I could keep half my net worth in the digital currency and just flow and trade and go in and out of things. I could buy groceries. I could buy a house with it. it wouldn't, I'd be agnostic to it. That is a vision that's really attractive versus this tiny little thing that for some people is an outlier that in, in many ways is not liquid or not easily liquid. Like if I want to buy a million dollars worth of, of Bitcoin right now, I got to do a fair amount of work to pull that off. It's not instantaneous. It's getting better. I agree. Bitcoin is a nothing burger. Love that saying. I couldn't agree more. He even told you if he wanted to buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now, it's going to take a lot of work to pull that off. These guys don't want a lot of work. They want to go in, they want to buy, they want to get out. Think about it. So in his saying, when he's talking about moving in and out of different currencies, exchanging on the fly, no worries. It's everything's instant. It's fast. It's cheap. Air miles. That's funny. Chris Larson 
talked about the same thing at a Money in Tech interview a little while back, 2014. His vision of Ripple's protocol. This is what he said. Ripple's protocol is value agnostic. You can put anything in there. Bitcoin, dollars, euro, airline miles. It's the world's first distributed currency exchange. That's what Kevin O'Leary just described to Pop. Pop knows what he's talking about. Kevin O'Leary knows what he's talking about. But one, once again, they will not say XRP. Hey, let's have a listen to Chris. It's only 57 seconds. Here we go. they released uh, to the world. And the protocol is really three things. So some way similar to the Bitcoin protocol, some way very different. Um, the way we view this is first and foremost, this should be um, a distributed payments uh, protocol. That sort of comes first before the map-based currency. Uh, we think that's really what the world needs, uh, this idea of an internet for value, which we can, we can talk about. Um, second, it is a map-based currency, uh, like Bitcoin. Map-based currency simply means a currency without a counterparty, which is a really unique thing in the world. It plays a really, really unique and important role in building an internet for value. And then third, very different from, from Bitcoin, because Ripple is value agnostic. You can put anything in there. You can put Bitcoins themselves in there. You can put airline miles, dollar, euro, yuan, real, anything can be in Ripple. Um, it ends up being, we think, the world's first distributed currency exchange. So that's kind of the Ripple protocol, those three things. So Kevin O'Leary just described to you Ripple's protocol. You heard it directly from Chris Larson's mouth. Come on. We know where this goes. All we have to do is hold. Now I'm going to move over to the chart. Let's look at some price action. Let me blow this up for you. This is from Janik Kivito. Hope I don't mess that up. My bad, my man. Give him a follow on Twitter. You can see his handle above. Let's blow this graph up. 2013. What did we have? Long base. Higher we went to space. 2017, almost the same thing. A long base before we went to space. What are we looking at in 2021? An even longer base. What do you think is going to happen? We are going to blast off. It is coming. No one can predict the exact date and time, people. Impossible. If you can predict the exact date and time when things are going to moon, you need to get a hold of me. But no one can do it. Okay, we can get time frames of when we think this thing is going to go. That's about it. You saw Kia, uh, Kia Crypto, the Joker, covered him yesterday. February, he's thinking we're pushing up to 60 cents. A lot of other people see a push up to 60 cents as well. XRP has, XRP has been held down way too long. Our time is coming. You just need to hang in there. We're going to get there. We're going to shock the world. Trust me on this. Then we move from Bank XRP, Brian Brooks, crypto is banking, Bitcoin and Ethereum are stable coins. And stable coins are banks. Blockchain is banking as you start to see start to see charter and crypto companies. Have a listen to Brian Brooks, 50 seconds. I know you guys hate a lot of videos, but that's okay. Just today we're going to get through this. And I think the recognition we have in my time with the OCC is crypto is bank. It's not that banks are okay, you know, trading Bitcoin. It's that Bitcoin and ETH and, and stablecoins, they are banks. Blockchains fundamentally are banking because what they're doing is allowing the transaction of value across networks, which is what banking has done for 500 years. They're doing it in, a, in an orthogonally different way, but that's what banking is about. And so when you see us, for example, as we will do soon, start chartering as banks, companies that are crypto companies, you'll start to understand that we're not necessarily trying to make it so that big banks can dominate the crypto market. We're trying to tell crypto participants that a bank charter might be the right form for you to do what you're doing. And there's a lot to unpack there, but I think that's the big There you go. You heard Brian so Brooks. Think- crypto is banking and they're not making it so these big banks come in and dominate everything. Just what we want to hear, Brian. Let's give these smaller guys, these smaller remittance companies a chance out there. And that's it. That is exactly what XRP does. Now, I want to jump over to my tweet from yesterday about my video. What did I cover? I said Golden Sachs has entered the game. There was a big partnership that went down. We covered it. But today, even further news comes out about Golden Sachs. Just to confirm what we told you yesterday, how they have entered the game. Here's the first article from Coindesk. Goldman Sachs. Coinbase has tapped Goldman Sachs to lead its upcoming IPO. How interesting that is. But wait, we're not done yet. And then another article from Coindesk. 
U.S. banking powerhouse Goldman Sachs has issued an RFI to explore digital asset custody and will enter the market soon, according to a source inside the bank. Goldman Sachs is here, people. They've been here. As I showed you yesterday, they are buying up these small, little, or even medium-sized little payment companies that are already tapped into RippleNet. They know what they're doing. They're doing everything behind the scenes. But when they fully come out and announce that they are here and they're starting to tell you what they're actually doing, that's when you know it's go time. That's when you know their position has been set and they are ready to release the beast to their customers, to their investors, to the institutions, you name it. It's time. Goldman Sachs won't be the last or Goldman Sachs won't be the first. You're going to see City come in, JP Moore. You're going to see all the big boys come in. You're going to start seeing Fidelity step up their game with Eric's X. Bact is going to step up the game. Everyone's going to start stepping up their game. All they've been doing is aligning the pieces in the back end. Well, the pieces are aligned. We knew sooner or later they were going to be aligned. They're going to, they're going to give the green light to everyone telling you, hey, guess what? It's safe. Come on in. And then from Michael at Bow 5 Links, US base Kraken. Users will be unable to trade XRP from January 29th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, according to a statement published Friday by the exchange. This is only for U.S. Uh, residents, U.S. citizens people. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Kraken came out, I thought, two weeks ago and said that they're not going to do anything. And now it seems like they did a complete 180 and they are delisting, or not delisting, they're halting trading. There's a big difference here. They are halting trading for U.S. residents. Pretty sure two weeks ago that they said... They were still going to allow this. Someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comments of this video. So the big news today, guys and girls, Goldman Sachs in the game. Told you yesterday. I showed you that partnership. I showed you the connections to RippleNet. They are here. They're helping Coinbase with an IPO. They are about to be custod custodian of digital assets. It's going to be Bitcoin. We know that it's going to be Ethereum. You better bet your bottom dollar at some point it will be XRP as well. No doubt about it. Let's keep an eye on the price of XRP. 28.62 is currently down about 0.45%. About I think we're going to have a nice little push up soon coming from XRP. We're way overdue. The Bitcoin dominance keeps dropping. Exactly what we want to see. All right, everyone, that's going to do for me. I got to go get to the gym. I got to finish laundry. I got to cut my hair and shave. I got to get ready for this party bus. Three to nine. Wish me luck. Oh, let me know who your picks are today. I'm going with the Packers and I'm taking the Bills over the Ravens. That's my big play today. I'm going to throw some Bills on that. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.